Good morning, dragons. I'm Mr. Salerno, and this is Flame, and we want to welcome you to the news of Camelot. Today is Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, and Flame and I are changing it up a little bit today. Instead of writing our normal agenda, we have these three words with question marks next to them. New, health, sun, and sun we specifically wrote on there because it's going to be a beautiful day outside today, dragons. The hottest that Flame and I have done the show yet this year. High of 78 degrees. Hopefully you get to get outside, enjoy the beautiful weather. And we started thinking there are a lot of words that actually begin with sun, right? So if you think about it, sometimes sun is a compound word in the beginning, like sunrise, right? And sometimes it just falls in the beginning of words, like sunny, right? So sunny isn't a compound word, but it is a word that begins with sun, right? And we had said sunrise, right? That's a compound word. Sunrise has the word sun in the beginning and then rise at the end. And then if we want to watch the sun rise, we certainly have to watch the sun set, right? What other words, Flame, do you think begin with sun? Ah, yes. We wear sunscreen in order not to get a sunburn, because there's nothing more grouchy than flame with a sunburn. And then there's some words that just have sun in the beginning. Sunday, Sunday, what? That's crazy. Sunday, Sunday. So this one, dragons, Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-Y, that is the day of the week and must be capitalized because it's a proper noun. This down here, S-U-N-D-A-E, that is what you eat, like an ice cream sundae. That does not have to be capitalized. That's called a homophone, a word that sounds the exact same, but it has a different meaning and a different spelling. So we thought of seven words there. See if you can think of some of your own words, dragons, to celebrate this beautiful day today. And now we have here health. Well, Flame and I were also discussing what we can do to eat a little healthier. And Workout Wednesday has us thinking about what we can do active with our bodies, but also what we can eat to put in our system that makes us healthier. Vegetables can sometimes be difficult. So Flame and I chose the bell pepper today. And the bell pepper is one of Mr. Salerno's favorites because it can go into a variety of things. You see, I've got my yellow bell pepper to honor the color yellow. Flame's got his green bell pepper. I wonder why. And bell peppers have a lot of health benefits to them. So we thought, let's think of some. The different vitamins and the different things that make up bell peppers. So bell peppers are about 90% water, right? So that means they are good hydration sources and they give us lots of antioxidants. Right? They allow the oxygen to do its job inside our body. They also have a little bit of fiber in them. So when we go to think about how our muscles move, it gives us a little bit more strength. But one of the reasons, dragons, that I'm using the color red is because bell peppers really help our blood. Right? They have a vitamin called vitamin B6. Vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 helps the movement of our red blood cells, okay? And then there's also this vitamin called K1, which I didn't know about until Flame and I were doing some research on this. Vitamin K1 keeps your blood healthy. So B6 keeps the red blood cells active and in a good spot, but vitamin K1 keeps the blood health nice and strong. And then sometimes we think of orange juice and other citruses as having a lot of vitamin C. Well, bell peppers have a lot of vitamin C too. And bell peppers can be put in a lot of different foods. You can chop it up into a salad. You can put it on different tacos or different enchiladas. I know tonight, I think I'm gonna make some pasta with chopped up bell peppers in it. And if you eat 
a whole bell pepper, you're going to get lots of these different vitamins. So consider a bell pepper, dragons. And that brings us to this land is your land. And we know it's not written on here, but Flame and I were trying to think of a very special state that's near and dear to us. And we chose a state that begins with new. Last week, we did New York. This week, we're going to do a state called New Hampshire. Now, New Hampshire is not the biggest state. It's located right over here. See that state right there, dragons? That one is New Hampshire. And New Hampshire was actually the first colony. We had 13 colonies. And New Hampshire was the first colony to break off from Mother England. The state of New Hampshire is named after Hampshire, England, and John Smith named it New Hampshire, but they decided that they wanted to declare independence from England. It became the ninth United State overall and is known as the Granite State because it is very mountainous. It has beautiful sunrises and sunsets with all its pretty mountains and beautiful lakes, and the granite is actually a mineral that is used to make things like bridges and is very strong, very durable, and very pretty to look at. Did you know, Miss Vickers, check this out, Miss Vickers, in 1833, New Hampshire founded the first public library in a town called Petersboro. And it was still standing even today, almost 200 years old, but the first United States public library came from New Hampshire. It has the shortest coastline. So you might notice, dragons, this blue part right here, that's the Atlantic Ocean, and this tiny, 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 tiny dot right there, that's representing 18 miles of coastline, the shortest coastline of any state that borders the Atlantic Ocean, or any ocean. Huh? How about that? So now we thought, well, let's make a list of the different things that begin with new, right? So we just mentioned our... This land is your land state, New Hampshire. That's a big word. That's a big state. New Hampshire. Okay. And a fun fact that we learned is we know New Hampshire isn't very big, but it has the smallest town of New Hampshire is less than a mile big. It's called Newcastle, and it's on the coast, and it is the easternmost town in New Hampshire. How about that? So see New Hampshire, Newcastle. And New Hampshire was one of the first New England colonies, right? So, so far, Flame and I have, we've reviewed Virginia, which is a southern colony. We've reviewed New York, which was a middle colony. And now today we have New Hampshire, which is a New England colony, right? So we have this, and we said last week we did New York as a state. It's also a pretty big city, right? Near New York is a state known as New Jersey, right? Are there any more United States that begin with new? Good one, Flame. Not necessarily near the Atlantic Ocean, but a state known as New Mexico. So we have a lot of lists here, dragons. We've got words that begin with sun, We've got some health benefits, and we've got some places that start with new. Action pack. And lists can be everywhere. Lists can help us organize. Lists can help us stay on track. Lists can help us with our thinking. But see if you can add to these lists any way you want, and hopefully you learned a little bit. Dun -da -da -da. It's time for the birthday box. We don't know if we have any dragons that are celebrating a birthday today. I'm going to have to dig pretty deep to see if we have a birthday and we do don't worry dragons today april 8th it's muhammad abukara's birthday he wrote us earlier this week that's awesome happy birthday muhammad in miss gillespie's class we hope it is super super special we have a great day for you as far as the weather so that's cooperating mail time now inside more letters flame you are getting so popular Let's see here. Dear Flame, thank you so much for the Diary of a Wimpy Kid book. Flame, it got delivered. Your book got delivered. It really made my day. I can't wait to read it. See you tomorrow on the news. Love, Charlotte. That's right, we're doing this. 
Now, Flame and I are going to get started today once the sun sets on a diary of a wimpy kid. And the offer still stands, Dragons. If you want a copy, we have copies. We want to mail these to you. Give us a shout out. We will get this in the mail right away. A diary of a wimpy kid. So that's from Charlotte. What else do we have in the mail? Dear Flame, I really like your daily announcements. I'm about to draw a dragon to hang in my window. What a great idea. Hopefully I'll get to meet you soon. Love, Karina from New Hampshire. Our show's made it all the way to one of the states that we've talked about, Flame, New Hampshire. Karina, this is really special. Thanks so much. Flame appreciates it. I certainly appreciate it. That's great, Flame. And maybe she'll draw you and put it in her window. How about that? And Miss Flaherty wrote us. Ms. Flaherty is always keeping track on how we're doing. Good morning, dragons. It's going to be a beautiful day today. Hopefully you can get outside and stay safe while doing it. I wanted you to know that Friday is haiku day. What's a haiku? You might be reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but please send us some haikus for Friday. Love, Miss Flaherty. Flame, what is a haiku? A haiku has different syllables, and it talks about nature. How many syllables? So the first line has to have five syllables. Just as a reminder, I'm a visual guy. So five syllables. Not five words, right? Five syllables. And then the second line has seven syllables. And the last line has five more syllables again. Well, maybe after we're done reading, we can brainstorm a haiku and share it tomorrow as an example. But it sounds like Miss Flaherty wants us to write some haikus for Friday. So we have two days to get that under control. All right? So we have some more homework. But before we get into homework, it is Workout Wednesday. So we're going to enjoy the beautiful weather outside. Flame and I thought of these great activities. Okay? We've got five of them. Four of them are cards, and one is a challenge. So, Dragons, we selected all these gold cards for the sunny day, and we're going to start with the giraffe walk. And it looks easy on cards, right? But I challenge you, Dragons, hold your arms out like this picture and tiptoe about 30 steps. It hurts. It burns your calves. But you have to stay on your tiptoes. You can't have your heels touch the ground. And that's called a giraffe walk. And I think it's called that because giraffes are very tall. Right, and they stick their necks out. I don't think they stand on their hooves. So now this one we'll call the test of time. Right, and the test of time is you put your back against the wall and you get in the seated position and you hold it. You just stay right there. You don't bounce up and down. Hold it. See if you can do it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and see if that helps your legs out. This one is called the tightrope. I love the tightrope. So check that out. Check the visual. So you put your leg, all your weight on one leg, and you have your opposite arm try to touch your foot without collapsing. That back leg sticks up in the air, and you get really flexible. It's a good way to stretch and to help your core. And then the last one, dragons, is squatters, where we like to pretend that we're holding imaginary bell peppers in front of us, and we bring our legs down, and we get in the seated position, but we don't sit down. If you want to, you can use a chair and sit down in the chair and then stand back up, but you certainly don't have to. And then the fifth thing is see if you can race around a bench or around a house or around something safe as fast as you can. Time yourself. See how long it takes you. And then next week or even the next day, see if you can get a little faster, even if it's by a couple tenths of a second. We hope you enjoyed today's program, Dragons. We hope you like the color yellow, and we hope you have a marvelous day. On behalf of Flame, I'm Mr. Salerno. Write us. Let us know if you'd like a diary of a wimpy kid. Wear your yellow and get outside. We'll see you tomorrow, Dragons.